In this next-gen cam power mill highlights video, we're going to be taking a look at customization of the status bar. The status bar is located at the very bottoms of your graphics interface down here within power mill. Uh, this status bar kind of indicates a few things. One, you get an inner area for your work plane, which does also display what work plane is active. Uh, the active plane that you're in for construction. Uh, based upon the work plane that's active as well. Uh, you also get the an area for uh, transform location, your mouse location, your cursor location within the graphics screen. And then over here on the right hand side we've got some information about um, whatever active toolpath is active within the Explorer tree. Uh, if I right click on the gray space over here on the right hand side you'll see I have customized status bar. If I click on that That'll pull up our options within Power Mill. So instead of going into our backstage manager to reach the options, lots of little places within Power Mill can reach options. Uh, this takes us directly to the customization of our status bar. Now, if we click one level up here in this tree that's on the left hand side, you'll see that the intelligent cursor kind of has a couple of tick boxes on here that allows you to turn off and on some of these options. Like for instance, the units, if I tick that on and off, these preset units are in here. Now, these preset units are great, so I usually tick all of them on and leave them that way, as this kind of gives me cursory knowledge when I activate a toolpath tool of the tolerance that that toolpath uses, the thickness that's left for the remainder of stock, um, as well as, say, the diameter of the tool and the radius that the tool has itself. So in this case, you'll see this is a three-quarter inch end mill with zero tool radius on it. Now, if we go down to that user-defined settings, we can tick on this user define one and what that does is that adds kind of a blank user defined space. Well, what I like to do typically is use these spaces to give definition uh, upon first glance. So I don't use them for like setup process or anything unless I have power mill uh, out on the shop floor in some form. Um, but I do like to use these so that I can quickly get a glance on some of the settings that maybe a operator may want to know uh, right off the bat or may want to convey to somebody uh, within my organization, uh, such as maybe the tool number. So I do like to label this say tool number. And then what we would want to do here in order to get into these customizations is add the expression to pull this out of the API to use in the field. So if I right click on any of the fields, of course, in Power Mill, we can edit all expressions. Now this is the expression editor. Uh, this actually allows us to click anywhere within Power Mill and automatically pull in that expression. That being said, what I like to do is right click on my toolpath and versus going through lists or trying to guess here, I just like to actively come in and click on that value. So if I come into my tool here within any toolpath, and I click on that tool value, you'll see that the expression is automatically added. And if we move this off to the side a little bit and I hit that green check mark, then that will add itself to that field. Once I do that, you'll see directly down at the bottom here within the status bar, that adds that tool number to the status bar. So keeping along the theme of that information that I like to know about the tool path, I might actually activate you know, the rest of these user-defined labels. And for my usage, what I like to do typically uh, is use things that, that, again, like things I want to know about. Maybe next what I need to know about in the tool path is maybe my cutter compensation. So I maybe do CRC for the label. Uh, come into the expression. Again, you'll have to right click in the edit expression to assign it to that field. And then come down into the tool path. And for this, we'll just click on that, that field. We may have to recycle or, or actually, uh, in this case, clone the tool path to just tick on the box. Now, yeah, that doesn't activate it because we are in the expression editor. However, what it does is that adds that expression tick to the field. So I'm going to go ahead and hit that green check mark. So any of the options within a toolpath or within anywhere in Power Mill, if you click on it, uh, if it has parameters assigned to it, then it's going to actually assign that into the expression uh, field there. So now that's active CRC. You can see it's not turned on for this toolpath, so it's set to zero. Zero is off, one is on. Uh, and then so on and so forth. Uh, maybe my feeds and speeds are something I really want to know. So I may want to actually do uh, speed or RPM in here. And keeping these uh, label fields at a minimum, very small, uh, maybe abbreviated items, is uh, very important to keeping this kind of cleaned up as far as the label goes as well. So then I'll come into my expression tree, edit that expression, 
uh, come down to my feeds and speeds in a toolpath. Now this is important. You want to do this per toolpath, not per tool. Uh, the actual tool itself doesn't actually hold the information. Whereas if we click on the field here in the toolpath, we can get the RPM out of that. And then of course my feed rate. Same thing, edit expression, grab my cutting feed rate, add that to the field. Now again, you can do this for anything that you want within the customization, uh, but you do wanna make sure that after you are completed and done, you wanna close out the expression editor and accept the changes. Now from here on, that should stay modal whenever I open up Power Mill. Uh, you can also save that out within your customization and that will go along with uh, your session of Power Mill. I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you for watching.